the transportation here in Kenya is crazy. crazy. It's crazy, you guys. hi guys welcome back to my channel in case you're new here thank you so much for subscribing and thank you so much for tuning in for returning subscribers of course you are welcomed all of you to this vlog and to this channel so today i want to share with you how or rather the cost of living in kenya maybe you're thinking about coming to kenya maybe you're thinking about moving to kenya from a foreign country and you've decided well i need to just start a whole new life in kenya or you're coming to kenya for a very long vacation and you'll need to um, rent a home or a house to stay one of the things that you should be asking yourselves is how will i sustain myself this includes the housing in kenya the security the transportation the cost of living the electricity the just everything you need to figure it out and that's why i created this so that i can tell you guys i can make your work easier to really plan on how you will sustain yourself as you live in kenya let's get straight to the video once you land at the airport the first thing you will think about is how you will communicate with people how you will call your relatives we have relatives here and to do that you will need a um, network provider so in kenya we have three network providers namely safaricom telcom and airtel safaricom is the largest of them all i would actually recommend you to have a safaricom number that's because you'll need it when you're transacting money through m-pesa and everything however safaricom is a bit expensive as compared to telcom and airtel so i think i just need to tell you guys this so don't take it as like i'm just putting this down and uplifting no it's not that way i'm just trying to tell these people who don't know about it and you're trying uh to figure out how much it will cost you so just know that safaricom it's a bit costlier and everything however it's fast as compared to the other so for you to buy the credit card or for you to buy a sim card uh, you'll need to go to the safaricom shop or the airtel shop which is found in nairobi cbd you just google on the map safaricom shop and it will lead you to one of the shops there and there you will acquire yourself a sim card and you'll begin your communication hopefully here in kenya and the most important thing that you should be looking at is the housing how will i find a good house in kenya more specific we are talking let me uh, bring it down to nairobi here we have uh there are very many places where you can live and this depends on the pocket or your budget that you're planning to spend on housing so we have houses that go from as low as thirteen thousand kenya shillings that's one one thirty dollars and even as low if it's a bed sitter you can find one for just 70 uh dollars that's seven thousand shillings and the same bed sitter it will cost you around twenty thousand dollars in another area in nairobi some of the high-end areas in nairobi include runda karen westlands hallingham uh lovington uh where else I hope I've not forgotten and if I have forgotten can you guys just comment down below so in these places you'll find like a three bedroom house or a two bedroom house costing you as much as a thousand dollars per month so uh, for instance in Westlands the two bedrooms two bedroom houses there they cost from a thousand dollars that's a hundred thousand Kenya shillings all the way up but the same houses uh, if you're looking for a two bedroom house in uh, other areas other middle class areas such as Roy Sambo or Kasarani or Don Home or Ruiru or Thika you'll spend these are just some of the places that I'm mentioning are found in Nairobi where you can get a uh, very cheap housing so these houses if uh, a two bedroom will cost you like anywhere from two hundred dollars that's twenty thousand Kenya shillings 
uh, from there up. Not forgetting that it can cost even less. Let me just prepare you. Here in Kenya, you need to choose between two. Either you stay in a house that is big, spacious, and has everything, but it's far away from the road, or you stay near the road and the house is small and expensive. That's that's the main problem here. And also the house hunting is a bit hectic. To add on that, if you're looking for to buy a house here in Kenya, it's so simple. You'll just log in. There are very many uh, realtors and companies which deal with houses. You can just find them by googling them and yeah, you'll find your house. So in general, you can get any type of housing depending on your budget. That's the good thing. Uh, like you have a diverse uh, variety to choose from when it comes to housing here in Kenya. Uh, the second thing you need to look at is the internet. You know, Kenya being a third world country, you may not be able to get internet in all households and therefore you'll be required to install your internet. And this equates to uh, uh, another uh, other expenses. So as for me, I am using 2 Mbps internet, which I pay just 1500 shillings per month. And that's the lowest you can pay for internet. Maybe they are lower. <laughs> if you guys are paying lower internet here in Kenya, less than 1500, kindly comment in the comment section so that I know. So, but as for me, uh, the, the lowest you can pay is 1500, and this might go up to as much as 5000 Kenya shillings per month. So, the one I'm using here is called Zalendo Afrinet, and they supply internet around Nairobi. So, if you're out of Nairobi, this is unfortunate for you. However, some of the houses come with internet installed. Most of the houses um, in the high-end areas come with internet installed, most of them. So that, that one is an advantage. But also remember, in that household, you, you are bound to pay more than these other places like uh, Roy Sambo, Vika, Ruiru all these kind of places. The places that I just mentioned are the middle class places here in Kenya where you can live comfortably and affordably. <laughs> Another thing that you need to consider when you are moving to Kenya is the transportation. <laughs> the transportation here in Kenya is crazy. It's crazy, you guys. It's called the Matwana culture. If you don't know Matwana culture, then you know it here. You know these matatus, the buses here, they are really well calligraphed. They have, they have been painted well, they have music, some have screen. They have, they just make you so comfortable. Actually, sometimes you might even pass your destination because of just the confidence you feel in the matatu inside of the vehicle. Like you feel like you're in a club. The vehicle has loud music. Like that's Kenya. That's Kenya, you guys. If you come to Kenya, you should experience these matatus. You can also use Uber or you can also use train but here in Kenya we don't have like trains to transport you from one town to the next like from Ruiru to to Reisambo or from Don home to I don't know where no it's not like that like the trains here are normally used mostly for long distances and mostly the train is used to transport people from Nairobi to Mombasa so the train is across there are very many uh or taxis so we have uber we have little cab we have bolt so you have a variety to choose from most of the people here in kenya use matatus if they don't own cars and these matatus will cost anywhere from uh 20 shillings to as much as 200 shillings depending on where you are going to for the uber of course it just depends on the distance that you cover i'm sure you guys know have know about uber from whichever country you're watching this from so yeah that's the same here in kenya i know most of you might, might be worried about the security but believe you me we have very good security in as much as you've had uh, some attacks before that's not how it is like right now you know maybe you might be thinking it's this country which normally has attacks no 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 that's a lie kenya is very secure most of the houses most of the apartments they have watchmen and also in the shopping areas we have security guards uh, actually in malls even you're not allowed to vlog in malls because of the security purposes so this just tells you how tight the security is now in kenya 
However, however, let me let me just warn you, however, when you are in CBD, please don't try to use your phone just aimlessly. Don't try to just use your gadget without any proper understanding of your surrounding because we have a lot of thugs in CBD who just snatch your phone and they just go. Let me tell you the story. <laughs> I was once snatched a phone. I was in a matatu in the... Uh, I was in a... Matatu is the bus, you guys have told you. I was in a matatu and uh, my window was open. So I was just there chatting. Then my phone was just, just got snatched. Like, it just got snatched. I decided, no, I won't keep quiet. You guys have never seen a dramatic girl. What? I literally was screaming. I was screaming and this attracted attention. And you know what? The thief was caught. And he was really, really beaten. So, just take care of your things. Even as you're walking around Nairobi CBD, uh, just make sure that everything in your bag or your purse is well placed. Because these people just come and push you and keep on opening the zip and they follow you for as long as you walk. So, eventually, they will open the whole zip and they'll just snatch what's inside. Or they come and push you, if you're carrying a bag with no zip, they come and push you and just snatch something from inside. So you need to be very vigilant when you are in Nairobi CBD. Food is a very important necessity that actually you need to have in mind when you're coming to Kenya. Like what will I eat? I'm not used to this kind of food. Where will I buy groceries? How much does food cost here? Well, hold up, hold up. So one thing you need to know. Groceries here uh, in Nairobi, in Kenya, it's, let me say, it's just average, it's not expensive, and it's not cheap either. So you might buy five tomatoes at uh, 20 shillings or 25 shillings. This all depends on where you are buying them. If you buy vegetables in the supermarket, of course it will be measured and you'll be told the price according to how many items you've taken so that one I can't know but best believe me it's not that expensive it will range from uh, as low as 50 shillings to as much as whatever <laughs> whatever amount that you want the biggest market to buy vegetables is called Marikiti this is where actually most of the vegetable traders go and get their goods so that they can supply to other parts of the of Nairobi and sell to people so if you want to buy cheap and in bulk, then I suggest you go to Marikiti Market to buy your vegetables and fruits. I, I think I should tell you roughly how it will cost you to eat lunch, have breakfast and dinner. Okay, in the morning, you'll be having bread. Bread, it costs 0 0.5 dollars. That's 50 Kenya shillings. This is the same as milk. It also costs 50 Kenya shillings, which is 0 0.5 dollars. And eggs. It should be from 10 Kenya shillings to 12 Kenya shillings only. So if you're being sold an egg past 12 Kenya shillings, just know that person is conning you. It's conning you. No. Yeah. For lunchtime, if you're having beef, a quarter beef, it may cost you anywhere from $1 to as much as um, $8 depending on how much you want your beef. If you want to buy rice, rice actually, it's a very important meal you should have in the house. So rice here costs $1.5, that's 150 shillings, all the way up to 500 shillings, that's $5. Uh, yeah, depending on which type of rice and which quality that you're buying. However, you might choose to go and eat from outside. If you're planning to eat from outside, just be prepared to spend more. There are many places where you can eat from outside and it will cost you from $4 to as much as $20 to eat outside, depending on where you're eating from. So yeah, they're normally blackouts, but I'll advise you when you're looking for a house, just uh, ensure that the apartment has a backup generator just so as to avoid all those kinds of nights where you don't have electricity and all that kind of problem. Because some of the times there is a blackout, maybe it can last for a day and you know this can be so challenging, more so if you're coming from a country where there are, you don't experience any blackouts at all, ask and make sure that they have clarified on that issue. Let me tell you guys, traveling has been made easier by the many agencies that have come up 
you know in the past we didn't have many companies offering traveling services but now we have a lot a lot of them the leading one being bonfire adventures because you're new here in kenya and you don't know most of the places i'd advise you to use the traveling companies that are there you'll go and check them on their websites and inquire more using traveling companies will ease the ease you the need to you know look for transport i don't know what to eat i think they cater for everything so choose a traveling company and you will be catered for everything when you come to kenya that will make your work actually easier during your travel to sum it up also you need to put into consideration the miscellaneous expenses i am referring to gym entertainment you know you you need to have these things anyway you need to go to the gym but it's not a must you need to be entertained that's a must i think like without entertainment it's a boring life so you need to plan for all this let's say for for a gym uh, you might pay from as low as 2000 kenya shillings that's 20 dollars all the way up to 80 dollars in a month this depends on the location of your gym some of the apartments have gyms and these are mostly the apartments in the high-end areas this makes it actually easier for the entertainment you guys here in kenya we have a lot a lot of entertainment consider especially the nightlife it's so lit it's so lit you guys uh, the best clubs we have space lounge actually i think that's the best we have babon lounge which was just opened recently we have a big club we have kiza we have mercury lounge all these are places where you can go and entertain yourself at night however we have also entertainment places during the day if you want to go for the game park we have the nairobi national park which is just found at the city actually so you don't have to travel much for that you can go out and just have lunch there are many many restaurants both in nairobi cbd and the surrounding areas so there's just a lot you can do for your entertainment i hope that you guys have acquired something that might actually help you when you're planning to move in kenya or so if you're planning to move and stay in kenya for good if you have any other question kindly comment down here so that i can answer having said that i hope that you guys have a lovely week and i hope that you stay blessed and welcome to kenya when you're coming that's the end of it all see you in my next vlog don't forget to subscribe and until next time have a good week